Question 1. This sign means A. Slippery when wet. B. Stop sign ahead. C. No U turn. The correct answer A. Slippery when wet. This sign serves as a cautionary message, indicating that when roads become wet due to rain or other moisture, they become slippery and hazardous. The purpose of the sign is to alert drivers to a situation where there's an increased risk of losing control of their vehicle. To navigate this risk, drivers are advised to reduce their speed when approaching wet pavement. This is important because wet surfaces require a longer distance to bring a vehicle to a stop compared to dry conditions. Question 2. You should use your horn when A. Another vehicle is in your way. B. It may help prevent a collision. C. Another driver makes a mistake. The correct answer. B. It may help prevent a collision. You should only use your vehicle's horn in situations where it is essential to prevent accidents or collisions. It advises against honking your horn to prompt a driver or cyclist to go faster or move out of your path, especially when they are moving at a slower pace. In such cases, the horn should not be used as a means of pressuring others to change their speed or behavior. Instead, it's meant for safety purposes, alerting others to your presence when there's a genuine risk of a collision. Question 3. Placard abuse will result in A. Placard revocation only. B. Only a fine. C. Placard revocation, a fine, and or jail time. The correct answer. C. Placard revocation, a fine, and or jail time. Using a disabled placard or license plate improperly is considered a misdemeanor offense. This refers to misusing the privileges granted to individuals with disabilities for parking in designated spaces. If caught misusing such privileges, the consequences can include losing the special parking benefits, facing a fine of potentially up to $1,000, and even being sentenced to a maximum of six months in jail. In essence, abusing a disabled placard or plate can lead to legal penalties and the withdrawal of the privileges associated with it. Question 4. On rainy, snowy, or foggy days, turn on your windshield wipers and use your headlights. A. On the high beam setting. B. So other drivers can see you. C. Only when driving on the freeway. The correct answer. B. So other drivers can see you. In adverse weather conditions like clouds, rain, snow, or fog, it's important to switch on your headlights. Specifically, if you're using your windshield wipers due to poor weather, it's mandatory to turn on your low-beam headlights. This combination enhances visibility for both you and other drivers, promoting safer road conditions during challenging weather. Question 5. You can help keep the driver behind you a safe distance away from your vehicle by A. Driving 10 miles per hour faster than the car behind you. B. Driving 10 miles per hour slower than the car behind you. C. Maintaining a steady speed. The correct answer. C. Maintaining a steady speed. Maintaining a safe distance behind your vehicle isn't always straightforward. But you can contribute to the safety of the driver following you by keeping a consistent speed and providing clear signals for turns, lane changes, and slowing down. This proactive approach aids in preventing abrupt reactions from the driver behind you, promoting a safer driving environment for everyone on the road. Question 6. There are oncoming vehicles to your left and a row of parked vehicles to your right. You should steer. A. Closer to the oncoming vehicles than the parked vehicles. B. Closer to the parked vehicles than the oncoming vehicles. C. A middle course between the oncoming and parked vehicles. The correct answer. C. A middle course between the oncoming and parked vehicles. When faced with oncoming vehicles on your left and a line of parked cars on your right, the safest approach is to navigate a middle path. This means steering your vehicle between the oncoming traffic and the parked vehicles, finding a balance that minimizes potential risks from both sides of the road. This strategy helps you maintain a safe distance from obstacles on both sides, reducing the chance of accidents. Question 7. If you approach a flashing red traffic light, you A. Are traveling in the wrong direction. B. Must treat the intersection as if it is controlled by a stop sign. C. May not proceed until it changes to green. The correct answer. B. Must treat the intersection as if it is controlled by a stop sign. Approach a flashing red light as you would a stop sign. 
completely halt your vehicle at the designated stop line. If there isn't a stop line, stop before the crosswalk or the intersection itself. At this point, give the right of way to all other vehicles and pedestrians. The key is to treat a flashing red light just like a stop sign, ensuring safety and following traffic rules. Question 8. When driving on a slippery surface, such as snow or ice, a. Shift to a low gear before going down steep hills. B. Maintain traction by following other vehicles closely. C. Pump your brakes to keep them from freezing. The correct answer. A. Shift to a low gear before going down steep hills. To prevent skidding on slippery surfaces, use low gear on hills. Shift to low gear when descending steep hills to control speed. Increase following distance. Keep more space behind vehicles for better reaction time. Avoid sudden stops, refrain from abrupt braking to prevent skidding. Pump brakes, if no anti-lock brakes, pump them to slow down without skidding. Question 9. When driving at night, you should A. Always use your high beams. B. Look directly at the headlights of an oncoming vehicle. C. Increase your following distance. The correct answer. C. Increase your following distance. Driving at night is riskier compared to daytime due to reduced visibility, making it harder to gauge speed, distances, and potential dangers. To mitigate this, increase following distance, extend the space between your vehicle and the one ahead. This allows more reaction time in case of sudden stops, reducing collision risk. Proper headlight use, night driving requires headlights. Switch between high and low beams correctly, avoiding blinding other drivers. Question 10. Flash your brake lights or turn on your emergency flashers if you A. Need to warn other drivers of a collision ahead B. Are temporarily parked in a traffic lane to make delivery C. Are backing out of a parking space The correct answer A. Need to warn other drivers of a collision ahead If you anticipate a collision up ahead, alert drivers behind you for their safety Either switch on your emergency flashers or tap your brake pedal rapidly three or four times. This warns following drivers about the potential danger, giving them time to react and prevent a potential accident. Question 11. This road sign means A. You are about to enter a one-way street from the wrong direction. B. U-turns are prohibited. C. You may proceed if the way is clear. The correct answer. A. You are about to enter a one-way street from the wrong direction. This sign indicates a one-way road, entrance, or exit. If you're facing this sign, it means traffic is moving in the direction the sign is pointing. If you're driving towards this sign, you're going the wrong way and should turn around to align with the indicated traffic flow. This sign guides drivers to follow the correct direction of travel on the designated route. Question 12. If you are feeling fatigued while driving, you should. A. Increase your speed to reach your destination more quickly. B. Increase the volume of your radio. C. Find a safe parking area to take a short nap. The correct answer. C. Find a safe parking area to take a short nap. Stay vigilant for signs of fatigue while driving. If you find yourself battling to stay awake, swaying out of your lane, or resorting to turning up the radio and opening windows to stay alert, you're likely too tired to drive safely. In such situations, it's wise to locate a secure area to park and take a brief nap. This approach ensures you're refreshed before continuing your journey, preventing potential accidents caused by drowsiness. Question 13. Animals may be transported in the back of a pickup truck only if A. The sides of the truck bed are at least 18 inches high. B. They are properly secured. C. The tailgate of the truck is closed. The correct answer. B. They are properly secured. When transporting an animal in the back of a pickup truck or any other type of truck, it's crucial to ensure the animal is securely restrained to prevent it from falling, jumping, or being thrown out of the vehicle. This precaution safeguards the animal's safety and prevents potential hazards caused by unsecure transportation. Question 14. You are driving on a one way street. You may only turn left onto another one way street if. A. You increase your speed before the turn. B. Traffic on the street moves to the right. C. Traffic on the street moves to the left. The correct answer. C. Traffic on the street moves to the left. 
you're allowed to make a left turn onto a left moving one-way street if there's no sign preventing it. However, you're not permitted to turn left onto a one-way street where traffic moves to the right. This rule ensures safe and proper traffic flow while making left turns onto one-way streets. Question 15. What is the benefit of a space cushion around your vehicle? A. Other drivers can cut in front of you, improving the flow of traffic. B. If another driver makes a mistake, you have time to react. C. It inflates to protect you from injury in the case of a collision. The correct answer. B. If another driver makes a mistake, you have time to react. Maintaining a buffer of space around your vehicle is crucial for allowing ample reaction time if another driver commits an error. This space provides you with the opportunity to safely brake or maneuver in response to unexpected actions, such as a vehicle unexpectedly entering your lane. This practice enhances your ability to avoid accidents and ensure safer driving conditions. Question 16. When may you legally drive around or under a railroad crossing gate? A. Never. B. When you can see clearly in both directions. C. When the warning lights are not flashing. The correct answer. A. Never. Never attempt to bypass or slip beneath a lowered gate at a railroad crossing. After the gate is lifted, only proceed over the tracks once you have a clear view in both directions and you are confident that no trains are approaching. This guideline ensures your safety and prevents potential collisions with trains at railroad crossings. Question 17. A U-turn is not permitted. A. In a parking lot. B. On or near any curve or hill. C. On a straight roadway with a clear view for 500 feet in both directions. The correct answer. B. On or near any curve or hill. Avoid making U-turns or turning around when you're on or near a curve or hill. This is crucial because such locations can obstruct your view of approaching vehicles or pedestrians, potentially leading to accidents. It's a safety precaution to prevent collisions due to limited visibility in these challenging driving situations. Question 18. If you have an argument with another person and you are angry, you should A. Loudly play the radio while driving so you won't think about your argument. B. Take a few minutes to cool off before driving. C. Drive on the interstate to let off steam. The correct answer. B. Take a few minutes to cool off before driving. Your emotional state influences your driving safety. If you're extremely angry, excited, fearful, anxious, or sad, it's important to wait until you're calmer before driving. Your mental state should be clear and focused on driving, not preoccupied with emotions that could affect your concentration and decision making. This precaution ensures you're mentally prepared to operate a vehicle safely. Question 19. A diamond-shaped sign means A. Yield B. Stop C. Warning The correct answer. C. Warning Diamond-shaped signs serve to caution drivers about unique conditions or potential dangers up ahead. These signs are usually colored yellow or orange and play a vital role in alerting drivers to be prepared and take appropriate actions in specific driving scenarios. Question 20. If your vehicle has a two-part safety belt system, you should A. Use only the lap belt B. Use both the lap and shoulder belts C. Use only the shoulder belt The correct answer. B. Use both the lap and shoulder belts when your vehicle features a two-part seat belt system, remember to wear both the lap belt and the shoulder belt. Relying on just one part significantly diminishes your safety. Even if your vehicle has an automatic shoulder belt, ensure you fasten the lap belt too. This comprehensive usage of seat belts maximizes your protection while driving. Question 21. At a railroad crossing, you must A. Watch for vehicles that must stop at all railroad crossings, school buses, trucks carrying hazardous materials, etc. B. Watch for multiple trains. C. Both of the above. The correct answer. C. Both of the above. Approach railroad crossings with utmost care, ensuring you cross only when certain that no trains are approaching. Also, stay mindful of vehicles required to stop at all railroad crossings, like school buses and trucks carrying hazardous materials. This cautious approach is crucial to prevent accidents and prioritize safety when navigating railroad crossings. Question 22. 
Alcohol in any concentration is A. A stimulant B. A depressant C. Neither of the above The correct answer B. A depressant Alcohol is a depressant, regardless of its concentration. It slows down nerve signals and bodily processes, leading to reduced inhibitions and impairing a person's focus and alertness. This effect compromises the ability to concentrate and stay attentive, underscoring the importance of refraining from alcohol consumption when operating vehicles or engaging in activities that demand full mental and physical capabilities. Question 23. At intersections, crosswalks, and railroad crossings, you should always A. Stop, listen, and proceed cautiously. B. Look to the sides of your vehicle to see what is coming. C. Slowly pass vehicles that seem to be stopped for no reason. The correct answer. B. Look to the sides of your vehicle to see what is coming. Whenever you approach areas where pedestrians might cross or vehicles could enter your path, such as intersections or merging lanes, it's essential to check both the left and right sides of your vehicle. This ensures you're aware of any potential oncoming traffic or pedestrians, helping you make safe and informed decisions while driving. Question 24. This sign indicates A. A. Railroad crossing. B. Pedestrian crossing. C. No passing zone. The correct answer. A. Railroad crossing. Yellow signs displaying black symbols are designed to alert drivers of potential dangers or unique situations ahead. Round signs, on the other hand, exclusively serve to warn drivers of upcoming railroad crossings. These signs play a vital role in promoting driver awareness and safety by highlighting specific road scenarios. Question 25. You may cross double yellow lines to pass another vehicle if the A. Vehicle in front of you moves to the right to let you pass. B. Yellow line next to your side of the road is broken. C. Yellow line next to the opposite side of the road is broken. The correct answer. B. Yellow line next to your side of the road is broken. A broken yellow line in the middle of the road signifies that vehicles adjacent to the broken line can pass into the oncoming lane when it's safe to execute the maneuver. This marking offers guidance for passing slower vehicles or overtaking, ensuring that drivers make safe decisions while on the road. Question 26. If pedestrians are illegally crossing in the middle of the street instead of in a crosswalk, you A. Must stop for them. B. Do not have to stop for them. C. Should honk your horn at them. The correct answer. A. Must stop for them. Pedestrians always have the right of way, and you must give way to them in all situations. This includes cases where pedestrians might be crossing the street improperly or at non-designated locations. Even if pedestrians are jaywalking or not following the rules, you are still required to stop for them. This emphasizes the priority of pedestrian safety and the responsibility of drivers to prevent accidents involving pedestrians. Question 27. You must stop at the intersection ahead. Just before the intersection, you have to cross railroad tracks. You should stop before crossing the railroad tracks when a. There isn't room on the other side for you to completely cross the tracks. b. The crossing is located in a city or town with frequent train traffic. c. You are transporting two or more children in a passenger vehicle. The correct answer. a. There isn't room on the other side for you to completely cross the tracks. When you have to stop your vehicle after passing over railroad tracks, ensure that you have completely crossed the tracks before coming to a halt. It's important that your vehicle is entirely clear of the tracks before you stop, as this prevents the risk of stalling or being stuck on the tracks, which could lead to hazardous situations with approaching trains. Question 28. You reach an intersection with stop signs on all four corners at the same time as the driver on your left. Who has the right of way? A. The driver on your left has the right of way. B. You have the right of way. C. Whoever is signaling to make a turn has the right of way. The correct answer. B. You have the right of way. When two vehicles reach an intersection simultaneously, and each corner of that intersection has a stop sign, the vehicle positioned to the right has the right of way. This rule simplifies decision making, ensuring smoother traffic flow and reducing the likelihood of confusion or collisions in such scenarios. Question 29. You drive defensively when you A. Put one car length between you and the car ahead. B. Look only at the car in front of you while driving. 
C. Keep your eyes moving to look for possible hazards. The correct answer. C. Keep your eyes moving to look for possible hazards. Driving defensively involves scanning the road ahead for possible dangers. It's risky to only focus on the immediate area in front of your vehicle. To drive defensively, look farther down the road for potential hazards. While doing so, stay aware of the presence and movements of other vehicles around you. This proactive approach enhances safety by giving you more time to react to potential dangers and traffic situations. Question 30. You must file a report of a traffic accident occurring in California when A. Your vehicle fails a smog test. B. You are involved in a collision and there is an injury. C. You change your insurance company. The correct answer. B. You are involved in a collision and there is an injury. In case of a collision, if there were any injuries, even minor ones, or fatalities, it's essential to report the incident to the DMV within 10 days. This report must be made regardless of who was at fault, and even if the collision took place on private property. You, or someone representing you, are responsible for making this report, ensuring that necessary actions are taken and proper documentation is provided following the accident. Question 31. If a road is slippery, maintain a following distance that is a. No different than normal. b. Farther from the car ahead than normal. c. Closer to the car ahead than normal. The correct answer. b. Farther from the car ahead than normal. On slippery roads, your vehicle requires more distance to come to a stop compared to dry roads. To account for this, it's important to keep a greater following distance while driving on slippery surfaces. This provides you with more room to react and stop safely reducing the risk of accidents caused by inadequate braking distance. Question 32. When can you drive in a bike lane? A. 30 minutes after sunset or 30 minutes before sunrise. B. On foggy days when visibility is low. C. 200 feet before making a turn. The correct answer. C. 200 feet before making a turn. When making a right turn you're allowed to enter the bicycle lane up to a maximum of 200 feet before reaching a corner or driveway entrance. This is to ensure a safe and gradual transition into the turn. However, it's important to note that you should not drive within the bicycle lane at any other time except when you're about to make a right turn. This guideline helps maintain the safety of cyclists and the flow of traffic. Question 33. Which of these vehicles must always stop before crossing railroad tracks? A. Tank trucks with hazardous materials placards. B. Motor homes or pickup trucks towing a boat trailer. C. Sport utility vehicles carrying four or more persons. The correct answer. A. Tank trucks with hazardous materials placards. A diamond-shaped sign on a truck signifies that the truck is transporting a hazardous load, which could include items like gas or explosives. Vehicles with these signs are obligated to stop before crossing railroad tracks. This precaution is taken to ensure the safety of the transport, other vehicles on the road, and to prevent potential accidents involving trains at railroad crossings. Question 34. You are crossing an intersection and an emergency vehicle is approaching while using its siren and flashing lights. You should A. Stop immediately in the intersection until it passes. B. Pull to the right of the intersection and stop. C. Continue through the intersection, pull to the right, and stop. The correct answer. C. Continue through the intersection, pull to the right, and stop. If you're in an intersection and notice an emergency vehicle with flashing lights and or siren approaching, proceed through the intersection and afterward, move to the right and come to a stop. It's crucial to yield the right of way to emergency vehicles like police cars, fire engines, and ambulances using these signals. This ensures a clear path for them to swiftly reach their destination and respond to emergencies effectively. Question 35. A large truck is ahead of you and is turning right onto a street with two lanes in each direction. The truck. A. May complete its turn in either of the two lanes. B. May have to swing wide to complete the right turn. C. Must stay in the right lane at all times while turning. The correct answer. B. May have to swing wide to complete the right turn. When a vehicle turns, its rear wheels trace a tighter path compared to the front wheels. The disparity in the paths between the front and rear wheels is more pronounced in longer vehicles. As a result, longer trucks need to make wider turns, especially right turns, 
to ensure their rear end clears objects and corners. This prevents collisions and accommodates the turning dynamics of these vehicles due to their size. Question 36. A peace officer is signaling for you to drive to the edge of the roadway. You decide to ignore the officer's warning and flee the scene. You are guilty of a misdemeanor and can be punished by being a. fined up to $1,000 b. jailed in the county jail for not more than one year c. given a warning and a citation The correct answer b. jailed in the county jail for not more than one year If someone operating a motor vehicle intentionally runs away or tries to escape from a law enforcement officer who is carrying out their duties, they are committing a misdemeanor offense. This offense can lead to a punishment of up to one year in a county jail. This law emphasizes the seriousness of evading law enforcement and the potential legal consequences for such actions.